Claude's new skill system might be the most powerful feature that no one's using yet. And it's really not just for engineers. In fact, I think its actual sweet spot is all of us using it for automations for the things that we do commonly on a regular basis. I want to dive into a couple common uses or uses that I might imagine being able to use it for, um, as well as a little bit of the technical understanding, just because there's a real question about why do we have another one of these tools? There's so many, it's pretty crowded. Let's dive into all of those tools real briefly to better understand why skills exist, what they're good at, and then take a look at actually using them for kind of repeatable, normal day kind of work. Okay, first and foremost, what is a skill? Anthropic Claude has released this concept of skills. It's really just a packaging of maybe some instructions in that skillmd file, potentially some data in like a CSV file, and maybe even programs in script files or other things. There, they can be quite a few things, but the idea is they're self-contained units of work that can be repeated frequently or uh, consistently. And that's really one of their extra values is you can use programming to make sure that it's more deterministic when you're trying to do the same thing again and again. For example, think about writing something like a newsletter and you want a very consistent format no matter what. You can just have a script do the actual work and the intelligence gather the information. So there's really some value here for a very repeatable scenario, but Let's take a look at how these are kind of fitting into the current landscape. Okay, as I mentioned, it's getting pretty crowded in here. There's a lot of different tools. The chats have projects and apps and custom GPTs, things like that. And on the right over here, we have slash commands or prompts, subagents and plugins. MCP sits in the middle, kind of straddling both of these. So almost all of these have the same shape to some degree, and it's really very complicated. So the question here is, where does the skill fit? The answer is it goes across both. So it sits in the middle. The folder that we saw at the top, we'll see this in just a second, goes into something like Claude Codes. If you zip that folder up, you can give that to the chat experience or the consumer side. So it slots in the middle, but interestingly, it overlaps tremendously with MCP, or it looks like it does. But let me very briefly say, MCPs are there to expose external services. Skills, by definition, are there to expose or contain internal services. So you can write programs and data and prompts and instructions in one folder, if you will, and that will continue to be reused within that context. Their intention is not to reach out and expose external services. In fact, so much so that they're limited from a network standpoint on the left side of this chart. They can't reach out to the network for almost anything. So when we talk about MCPs and skills, we really are starting to talk about the difference at the context level. Every MCP that you add automatically exposes a description of all of the tools that it exposes. Skills, on the other hand, skills only expose a very short, basically one sentence description. The model comes across a scenario where the user's asking, I have this PowerPoint file, please get me information from it. It then says, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. I have something called a skill here. So it says, oh, let me call the skill and get more information about it. Calls out, gets the skill MD file, which is the rest of the information about this skill. That goes back to the model. The model reads up on that and says, oh, interesting. I see what you've got now. I see what you're doing. Yes, you might be something that I want to use. And then progressively more information is added into the context. Okay, so here we are in the Anthropic Skills environment, and these are just some example skills that they've shared during the launch. These skills, the doc skill, the PDF skill, PowerPoint skill, and the Excel skill, these are actually installed by default. You don't have to come and install these. If you just go to Claude and ask for them, they'll already start using them. What I wanted to do is kind of take a look at the insides of one of these. Like imagine that we wanted to create a document file or some kind of file for uh, just kind of a Word doc. Doing that, you'll see there's a skill file in here, and then there's some scripts on how they write and read and utilities that they use. So it's starting to look a lot like a traditional kind of program to do this work. But if we look inside of the skill, there's some header data here we'll take a look at in a second. 
and then a very long prompt. We don't want all of this in the context window. If I'm just saying hello, I don't want this to also be in my context window. It doesn't need to be. And so what is in the context window is up here. So I'll go back to the code view so that you can see the markdown itself. And what we have is a definition of this kind of YAML front matter. That's just this concept between these three dashes at the top. And we have key value pairs. We have a name that's important, a required field, and description is a required field. And so this required description field is the only thing that I was saying that goes into the context window so that the model knows, oh, I have a skill that does comprehensive document creation, editing analysis with support for track changes, comments, blah, blah, blah. That's what it knows. It knows that it has a skill that does these things. Let's run one of these from Claude Code so that we can see the explicit usage, and then we will jump into actually using them from a consumer standpoint. All right, so here I am. I am in a cursor just so that we can see here will be the place that we bring Claude up. Over here is the Claude file that is in this directory. And inside of this .claude folder, we have a new folder called skills. What's happening here is these skills, when Claude code starts a new chat, the skills themselves, as we've talked about, we have two of them here, will go and read this skill MD file. And that skill MD file, or just the description of it, is what's inside the front matter description. If we look at one of these, then you can see that the front matter description is this sentence or this set of sentences. That's all that's in the context at this point. So we have this in our context at this moment of launch. Okay, so what we're going to do is tell the system to use the code review skill to run a code review. And what you'll see here in Claude Code is it's coming back like Claude Code does to say, um, are you sure you want us to run this skill, which is basically there's a trust surface here that we need to verify that you're okay going across, which is really nice. So I can say, yes, I'm good running that. I know I've previously installed it or it's even in this folder, but I'm okay running it and passing context to it. So let's take a look at this skill itself. If we look at this skill, it's got the front matter here that we see and kind of a big description of all of the things that we might describe from a code review. If we wanted standard code reviews and kind of in our company or in our group, this is how we perform code reviews and the things we look for. This, this simple skill here as a folder might be something that we want to share. And so here is our code review, as you might imagine, of course, following the instructions in that uh, definition. All right. Now for some of the best parts, I'm gonna very briefly cover this. If you go into your settings, you will see a section of settings called capabilities. Inside of capabilities, that's where you'll enable different skills. So you can come in and turn on different skills and you'll see some of the skills that Anthropic has already offered. I am in the web client. This would be the same in the desktop client. Um, I've added some of my own skills as well up here. Franchisee is one that we'll be seeing in a second. Um, and in fact, the movie TV info is, is another one or show search. Those are two other skills that we might see in a second so that you see that they're enabled here. Um, so if you come back and start a new chat, these skills are already available to us in this space and we can just start asking questions right away. If you have a new skill or want to create a new skill, they actually offer a skill. I'll show you here one more time in capabilities called the skill creator. You do have to turn it on, but this is really a valuable one. If you've got Anthropic or Claude and you pay for it, I would say go turn this on and ask for a specific skill that you like. You can go back and forth editing with it. it you'll need to download a zip file and then drag the zip file here to add it, or you select the upload skill here. Either way, but a zip file is the way that you're going to be transporting this. All right, I have several skills. Let's take a look at the first one, which is my network tester skill. And it's just a skill that I put together that basically runs a few network tests to see what's available for skills. So here in kind of the chat UI environment, the different uh, consumer side, it's not supposed to have any access to the internet, though there's a, a little secret that you can use to get around a little bit of that. They want to make sure that they're very much in control of what's happening on the network. And to do that, what they've done is basically put everything into a hard sandbox so that you basically can't do anything. You can't use any network interfaces to make communications, which is fine and I understand it, but it really is limiting to this tool set in kind of a major way. Frankly, what I would prefer to see here is that they offer you, do you want to run this whenever you run one of these 
skills, very much like you saw down at Claude Code, very much like you would see using an MCP here in the UI. The MCPs do have network access and do share your context in the exact same way and have the exact same potential for this kind of exfiltration of data. So that approval is something I would prefer that they offered here but they don't, and they're just limiting the network access, and that really limits things. We'll see that in a second. Let's run a different skill. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time building something called show search, and show search is a way for me just to very quickly say, here's a TV show or a movie. I want a specific kind of information back, if you don't mind. And so this is me saying, use my show search skill and tell me about K-pop demon hunters. I am saying, use my X skill. And I'm using that again and again. I wish they had figured out some kind of at mention mechanism or a slash command mechanism and just made it a user selectable skill to execute every single time. I think that that would have been a better way. I'm not sure why we want to basically do dependency injection and, and not know what skills are available or what might happen when we request something from these systems. I'd rather be able to be a little bit more predictive and select the things that I'm trying to, to get the system to do. And that way there would be no attachment to the context until I wanted to use the skill. That's just my two cents though. Okay, so this skill does get information from the internet. And the way that I did this is I had to go around a little bit. Instead of actually building get information from an API, I used the web search tool that Claude itself still has access to. So inside of my skill MD file, I'm describing use the web search system to get this information. And as you can tell, it's going into a lot of places on the internet to try to get all of the different information that I wanted to include inside of the information that comes back from my show search. And so this show search will tell me all kinds of information, including the budget or uh, how much it's made, the revenue off of it, what the different customer sentiment is, the different critic store scores, all of these things, but it's really using web search to do all of that instead of an API. And I think the lack of being able to use that API is really frustrating at this point, and it's just a security mechanism that they're putting in place. So I really think that this would actually be more useful or more valuable and faster and cleaner if they had just said, this is getting to be a little bit like ChatGPT apps. Your, of your, your access to the internet or other things is directly available. You have to approve the things that you're willing to put into your environment or we'll pre-approve them before you can put them in. But really we're getting back to ChatGPT apps, which is actually what I'm kind of looking for here. So showing you an earlier version of that, my first build that I created, it can go and create a whole web system. It can do whatever you want it to do. Uh, and this is really attractive. This is the one that got me there. I saw that the images couldn't come through. I started trying to figure out ways that I could make it pull the image, but of course it has no network access, et cetera, et cetera, we just described. So it really has some weakness. And at the same time, I tried to create this as a template so that it could just fill in with data every single time, but it essentially actually rewrites this file every single time, which is pretty darn painful. So what I'm really looking for is apps repeatable processes that I can get a repeatable output with. And this is just hinting at the fact that apps are going to be fantastic. And of course, Anthropic will have to move into that as well, but this is a good start. Okay, but one other thing. So I've only shown you kind of a simple version of I wrote a simple skill to get information about a TV show or something like that. That's fine. This actually, I think, this consumer version of this set of skills is an answer, both how you might use Excel data, working with Excel spreadsheets, uh, using this to create PowerPoint. And by the way, if you have Anthropic, go create a PowerPoint uh, system out of it. It's the best slide creation system I've seen recently because they're programmatically talking to PowerPoint and creating PowerPoint through little scripts that they've created. And we're not asking the intelligence to try to do that. So they're doing a pretty good job of that. It's not great, but it is a very good start. You can see where things are going. But at the same time, so imagine that I run a shop and I kind of manage a bunch of franchisees that run McDonald's across the country. And I get a report once a week and I kind of want to keep track of the information on that report. This kind of work, this is what I call front office work. This is the stuff that all of us have versions of. No matter what we do, we have versions of repeatable work that we seem to not have great automation or tools to repeatably do. So what I created was the franchisee tool, which knew how to take in data in a specific format and then 
repeatedly create certain uh, reports uh, from it and other things. And this one, in fact, you'll see, I am going to drop in the McDonald's franchisee data, which is all just mock data. And all I'm really asking is, can you give me the contact information for everybody in the Midwest? It is not in that file what's in the Midwest. So it's just a list of records that have, you know, somebody's name and address information and that has a city or a state in it, that kind of thing. And this has to use intelligence to figure out what the Midwest means. Just so you can see, it's still using intelligence to do some of this, but this is something that you might be able to do is drop a file in and be able to ask these kinds of questions. I admit this is one of those things that intelligence could have done anyway, so it's kind of a poor version, but you're seeing it work and it would work the same every single time. We'll see in a second that I'll ask it to do some plots against this data and those plots would be the exact same. So the, the charts that come out of it would be the exact same every single time. And right there is where this starts to get interesting. If you run a newsletter or you need to do the same report again and again, or you're creating a dashboard again and again, that you want to look the same every single time, you can create a skill that can create that dashboard once. And then on the outside of that, you will always, when you put new data in, you drop a new file in, you'll always get the same output. Run the plots for me. Let's see what it comes up with. So under the covers here, you can see that it installs all of the software that's needed, Plotly and Pandas. It's running programs that are inside of this this system that I built. So this system has the actual Python programs inside of it. It's not making this up on the fly. And of course, because of that, it'll be relatively deterministic. And so here are the charts that it came up with. These are the charts that are defined inside of the skill itself. So these would be the charts every single time I would be able to just drop my file on here and say, run my normal output against this. This is the top performers chart that we can see, the regional performance chart, as you might imagine. Okay. So, and so you can see that it's going to be generating the same series of reports every single time. This to me is where I think skills actually shine. Let me jump out and talk about that very briefly and then wrap things up. Skills. Skills fit inside of a very crowded workspace already of a lot of tools that do very similar things. And you can probably get the majority of this out of other tools. Uh, custom GPTs are probably the closest analog to what's going on here. I'm not sure that in this iteration, it's the the chat GPT killer or something like that. I don't think it's something that I'll be jumping to frequently, but for kind of zero code workflow, sort of, uh, it, it's not bad. It's a pretty good start. It's much better than having to figure out how to host an innate in kind of workflow that I can run every single time with the same data coming in. If I missed something or you really wanted me to hit something, please tell me and tell others in the comments below because that's entirely possible. So thanks for coming along for the ride on this one and I'll see you in the next one.